So this is a 1994 Mazda RX-7 FD, by far the most popular RX-7 without question. The FB has a good legacy too. The FC does as well, but a lot of people get the FC confused with other cars. So I like the FC, but the FD is the crown jewel. It's the one that part almost is like a partner with the Supra and the Skyline in that era of cars. When I think of 90s Japanese cars, I think of the Supra, the Skyline, and the RX-7. But the FD has a beautiful, beautiful curvy shape, and it's actually very hard to mount cameras on. I just figured that out today. But it's a beautiful curvy shape. It's very unorthodox. This thing has a giant board water turbo on it, and it makes right around 400 wheel horsepower, which in this light of a chassis is really, really fast. First thing you notice when you get in the FD RX-7 is that everything's very tight. When you sit in it, it feels tidy. It wraps all the way around the driver. It feels almost like a Japanese Viper. That's my first impression, because you have a low roof line, tiny windshield in the back, and fairly small windshield in the front. Visibility is decent, but it's not the best. It also has tiny lowering springs, so handling's a little bit more improved. The brakes are very, very easy to go on, nothing too bad. You just have to put a little bit of foot travel into the brakes and you're fine. The clutch in this is extremely grabby, so you can't be nice to it. And let's talk about how you can't be nice to this car at all. You have to be kind of mean to it to get it going. To get this giant turbo to spool, a rotary has, well, frankly, not much torque. So you rev these things out to eight, 9,000 RPM, and that's when you're cooking along. Normally in a piston car, you're starting to cook along at four to 5,000, but a rotary's power band is so much higher up, and it's also what makes it so much fun. It's such an unorthodox sound for a car. There's that joke, the Dorito in a Pringles can, and the brapping is the porting of the car, of the engine. And when people street port these, it really changes the character as well. Adds a little bit more power, and also creates the notorious rotary brap sound that everybody loves so much. When you hear a stock FD, it's pretty quiet. You don't really hear it that much. You come stock with twin turbos, and you can tell it's rotary due to the power band, but you can't tell because of the crazy sound or anything. It's much crazier of a sound when you put a big single on it. The engine codes for all the rotaries can be kind of confusing, but the two rotaries, the 13B, which became to be very popular in the United States, and then you got the three rotors out of the Cosmo, that a lot of people would take those and put them in the FDs, which made way more sense. I don't know why they didn't put the three rotor in the sports car, but who knows? And then of course you have people like Bad Mike who have the four rotors, but those are so rare out of the 787B race car. And just to kind of give you a perspective about how long the gearing is in an RX-7, I'll slow down some, shift, go to second gear, just kind of ease into it, see how it does. <laughs> Holy crap, this thing sounds so nasty. I've never heard something like this in person. fun it just it makes so much noise all at once it builds and builds and builds and out of nowhere it shows up this also has a five-speed transmission and also has the rx8 shift knob in it i recognize it as soon as they sat down because the rx8 for example is super proud of their triangles so there's triangles all over the car so as soon as I saw that, I was like, definitely a rotary car, yep. The shifter in this is also fantastic. It has a short shifter and the ratio is super close. For a second I thought I was a neutral, but that's a compliment to any short shifter. It's so great because when you're at low speed, you get on a little bit and let off. It makes all these crackles and pops that are just intoxicating, I love it. It also has HKS blow off which has this very charming whistle noise, very nostalgic of the early 2000s, Fast and Furious. And Fast and Furious actually made this car very popular as well, because of course it's the one that Dominic Toretto drove in the very beginning. You have nostalgia with that, nostalgia with everything. And they just built a really awesome car. Unfortunately, the FD didn't last that long because of 
high mileage FDs just not lasting that long. People have to replace the seals in them a lot. And rotaries are a car of love. If you don't love the rotary, just don't own one. There's no point. You have to maintenance them every now and then, rebuild them. But if it's done right, you'll have much longer longevity than others. But like the owner of this car says, it's not if it blows up, it's when it blows up. But in between, you have a really good time. So the steering wheel of the RX-7 is very, very unique. You almost never see this shape, but it's very 90s. It's just flat and straight but it also has the notorious horn buttons, and of course they don't work. Like, look at this. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Nothing but smiles, man. And thinking that there's something in the engine block doing this, that's just so odd to me. There we go, I'm getting the hang of it now. Right now, we're at 4,000 RPM. Most cars would be starting to scream. And look, we're cruising, it's no big deal. But as soon as I lay into it, let's go now. <laughs> Ooh, slow down, brakes are good. Okay, we're safe, we're not in a tree. This thing revs out, wow. It's interesting because there's no torque down low at all. But the torque and the horsepower feel very even when it gets into the power band. It doesn't feel like they're mismatched at all. Finally did an FD and I love it. I absolutely love it. I get why people keep these things alive. I get it. And I will tell you one thing, it gets really hot. You feel the transmission tunnel next to your knee and it is just ridiculously hot. The seats in this too are actually pretty comfortable. I'm actually surprised. A little faded, a little old, but that's just a 90 seat. It's okay. This car also has a little bit of paint faded every now and then, but it's a 50 footer car. It still looks good. It's an RX-7 FD. Also, the taillights are JDM on this, and he also has the great kind of grate you put on it that's carbon fiber and singles out the taillights. The USDM taillights are just kind of this one fluid kind of color motion that look tinted. This has a built-in ducktail made of carbon fiber, so it gives it that aggressive edge to it for sure. The exhaust on this is also HK is high power, so you can definitely tell that this exhaust was made for this car because sometimes people straight pipe these and it doesn't sound quite right. But this has the classic screaming rotary. And yeah, every time I drive a rotary, I'm like, please don't break on me. And that sounds really mean of me. But every now and then, apex seals, all the stereotypes, they're kind of true. But when a rotary works, there's just nothing like it. It's a very personal experience. And it's one of those things where you ever been in one or you haven't. I understand why piston motors are still around over the rotaries, but Mazda, I would really like if you tried to do another rotary just to show us if you can make it better and also if you can make it work forever. I'd love to see that. They've canceled it like five times now. Be about it or don't be about it. Pick one. Cornering capability though, when you're just kind of cruising around a corner, you can feel how light the nose is. Compared to a swapped RX-7, which I've done several times, it just, everything is so light up front, it's almost like a motor isn't even there. It's very odd. Because the ballots of the front and the back are about the same. Mazda is known for handling, and they always will be. And that's what they're so good at. Third gear. <laughs> you see this right now? Life's pretty good. Like, I'm just gonna let you guys hear the symphony. This ease. like you if you're in the wrong gear though. If you're at the wrong speed in the wrong gear, it feels very laggy and it feels like you're putting a lot of load on the engine. So you, when you do a pull, it's gotta be in the right gear. For the rim. for driving all the way from South Carolina to let me drive his big turbo FD. I had an absolutely fantastic time driving it. What do you guys think about the FD RX-7? Do you think it was worth keeping the rotary or not? Let me know in the comment section below and 
don't be a square, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time, and have a great day. Goodbye!